So yeah, as Akila said, my name's Ryan Anderson. Um, I'm from uh, Trello. Um, I work as a Trello support engineer, um, supporting customers with any questions that they have about Trello. Um, and I've been at Atlassian for approximately, or just over a year now. Um, so yeah, um, I'm calling from Hamburg, Germany, um, but I'm actually from New Zealand, so uh, apologies if my accent is uh, difficult to understand at times. I'll try my best. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about um, what Trello is, um, how it works, some of the features, um, some of the basic concepts that Trello has, um, and then we'll go through a live example of creating a board um, and creating um, a layout for a possible project. Um, and I'll probably ask you for an idea for a project. So um, when we get to that, hopefully you'll have some ideas for projects that are coming up in your um, organizations. Um, like Akila said, if I'm going too fast or too slow, um, both in the presentation or in how I speak, just let me know in the chat and I'll be happy to adjust. Um, and likewise, if you have any questions throughout, just write them in the chat. I'll try and catch them to, to answer them as we go, or um, one of uh, the moderators will, will let me know that I need to stop and answer a question. So yeah, definitely use the chat and ask questions. This can be interactive. So Trello, um, a couple of fun facts. Um, we have a dog called Taco as our mascot. Um, and this is actually a real dog who was um, one of the people who were involved in um, creating um, Trello. Um, where the name came from, um, we actually wanted to call um, Trello Trellis, um, but because the domain trellis.com wasn't available, um, but Trello was, we decided to go with Trello. So it's funny how things actually start like that. Um, what is Trello and, and why do I like it? Um, I think I've kind of summarized the, the things that I really like about Trello and what it means to me. Um, so the first one is it's very collaborative. Um, so it lets me work, um, do my work there and collaborate with my whole team. Um, and I kind of talk about this later, but, but my team is based all around the world in about eight or nine different time zones. Um, so collaboration um, in a, in a in a forum that's not synchronous with my teammates is really important. Um, easy to use. Um, it's it's the learning curve is not so steep to use Trello. Um, I used it actually before I started working at Atlassian, um, and just because it's intuitive, you could jump in straight away. Um, I mean, the concept of Trello came from post-it notes on a wall, um, and I think the team who created Trello did a pretty good job at recreating that sort of um, that feeling. The other one is that it's visual. So um, we try and put a lot of emphasis on making the board visually nice so it's attractive to the eyes. Um, and also that you can just see things at a quick glance. You don't have to read through a bunch of text or a bunch of documents just to find out what's going on. You can quickly look at a board and, and see what's happening. Uh, the other thing is it's flexible. It can be used in many different ways. Um, and I'll talk about this a bit more. I mean, this is about project management, but actually you can use a Trello board however you want. Um, uh, some people use it for a recipe book, um, a trip agenda. Um, I use it for my uh, planning jobs that I have to do around the home, which I never get to. Um, but yeah, it could be used for anything. Um, recurring, you could, I, I look at my Trello boards every day um, and it just helps me to, to know what's going on in my different tasks and projects that I have going on. Um, and it's very productive. It really helps me to get work done. Um, so that's very cool. So I check this every day um, and it lets me know what, what um, can be prioritized and it keeps me in contact with my teammates and lets me know what they're doing as well. As I said, the Trello team, well, my team itself is um, very <laughs> spread out across the world. So I have teammates in London, Hamburg, California, Texas, Sydney, Porto Alegre in Brazil, uh, and the whole Trello team is, is remote and that's how we started. Um, and so we want this tool to be something that's useful for our team. Um, and we also believe that lots of other teams can be empowered by our tool. And um, that's really one of the benefits of it. And especially with um, COVID-19 the past year, um, this has been really useful for a lot of teams having a space to um, work together when they can't actually be together. And these are some of my teammates in the photos there. 
all nice people. Um, as I said, while this uh, session is about project management, Trello, some people think of Trello just as a project management tool or just as a Kanban tool. Um, but it can it can be used in those ways, but it can actually be used for a lot of other things. Um, and so thinking of, of Trello just as project management is like thinking a spreadsheet is only for making a budget. Um, so you can do that thing with a spreadsheet, but you can also do a million other things. So um, we'll talk about project management, but you can also um, try to think uh, what other tasks or um, uh, team setups you can use this in. Cool. Is the speed okay for everyone? I'll take the uh, silence as a yes. <laughs> That's good. Yes. Great. Cool. Thank you. Um, so this is what Trello looks like, um, and this is this is my personal uh, to do. I, this is actually my active board. I um, made it look a bit tidier for the screenshot. So normally there's a lot more uh, things that I need to do in the to do column. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like, and this is um, this is my very basic um, setup that I have for things that I have to do. Um, and so you can see I have a to do list there, um, things I'm doing today, and um, what I've done this week, just so I can keep track of that. Um, and yeah, it's that's the basic concept of it. So as you can see, I talked about how the goal was to make it look like post-it notes on a wall, and you can see that sort of layout a little bit there as well. Great. So now I'm going to move on to some of the basic concepts of Trello. Um, whoops, I went backwards there. Um, so how does it work? Um, the main unit of Trello, or one of the main units, is a board. Um, so a board can be a project that you're working on. Um, it can represent that. Um, other uses are a board can represent a meeting. I talked about, um, or I showed my personal to-do um, uh, list there. Um, some people even use it for a space where they throw ideas for a new book or for New Year's resolutions. Um, so it's just a, basically a space where you can collect information together. Um, within a board, you can create lists. Um, and so lists are subfolders for your boards. Um, and you can use them to categorize ideas or tasks um, that you have. Um, as you saw in my, my personal board, um, you can also use them to determine the level of completion of a task. And that's sort of where the Kanban element comes in. Um, yeah, they can also be used to just create stories and um, the sections of a board, so things that separate um, content out. The next key element uh, is cards, and this is really where the content, um, your content is um, kept. And so uh, I have written in my notes, cards are the juice of your boards, um, so the meat, the juice of your boards, um, and every little piece of content can be added there. So this is where you have a title, which you can see on the, on the card front, um, and then you can put a lot of information, you can comment on the cards with your teammates. Um, and here's a little bit more information about the cards. Um, and so on each card, you can add labels um, so that you can, as I talked about earlier, visually see um, where there are links between cards. You can add checklists um, to cards to um, uh, have some tasks within maybe an idea or within maybe um, one individual task. You can add due dates um, to a card to help track when things should be done by. Um, and you can also add power-ups to a board, and I'll go into a bit more detail about them soon. Um, as I said, collaborating is, is really one of the things that makes Trello awesome. Um, so you can collaborate with others with Trello. You can invite them to your boards, um, and then they can see all of your content. So this is useful if you just want to um, others to have visibility into what you're working on or to what the project status is, um, but also if those people should actively work on the board and contribute to it too. Um, another thing that you can do is you can assign people to certain tasks. So I talked about cards, um, and you can assign people to those um, tasks, which um, just provides that extra level of um, accountability and responsibility. So once again, you can get that visual reminder of who's responsible for this certain task. Uh, 
Um, I talked about power-ups. Um, power-ups, I guess you could kind of call them apps. Uh, power-ups is what we call them in Trello. And um, these really extend the functionality of your boards and tasks um, by enabling these. Um, and I think this is something I really like because it allows you to link to other tools um, such as Google Drive, um, Dropbox, um, GitHub, uh, Slack. Basically, any tool that you can think of that's quite a big tool will have some sort of integration with Trello. And that really extends the functionality. Um, and it means that you can have all of your information across these different tools in one place. Um, and I think, uh, I mean, I've, I've read research about uh, how many different tools people use in an organization. And, and so Trello is really good at being able to um, bring these tools together in one place and give you an overview so you don't have to um, be looking everywhere. Um, as I said at the start, Trello is designed to be easy to use. So you should just be able to, the goal is that you should just be able to get started um, and be able to use it without to having to look at a lot of help documentation or to have much uh, tuition. Um, but you shouldn't let that fool you because I think power ups is one area where there's a lot of hidden functionality, functionality and power. So you can do quite complex things with Trello as well. Um, but it's got that whole range of um, easiness and um, complexity to it as well. Great, so we've got through the basic information about Trello, um, and I want to spend a lot of time today actually using the product um, and seeing what it can do and giving you, yeah, basically a chance to to ask any questions that you might have to see how it could work with a project. Um, so let's jump right into Trello. Um, hopefully you can still see this, is that right? Yeah. Yep, great. Um, and so basically this is my account in Trello. Um, and as you can see on the left hand side, I'm a member of a few different teams. Um, and for this, for this session, I created this team um, called project team. Um, this is where I can collect um, boards. You can almost think of it as a folder, a place where you can keep your boards. Um, and yeah, so I'll go ahead and create a new board. Um, let's call it amazing project. If anyone has a project that they would love to see an example of, put it in the chat and we can uh, we can do an example working through that. So it's a, a real life example for you. So as you can see here, we've landed on our project board, this amazing project, what we're gonna work on. Um, so maybe we could, no one's got any examples, so maybe we can think of this as like a, an online event that we're going to, to hold. Um, and um, I'm going to do a pretty general um, uh, layout for this. So as I said, we start with the board and then now I'm going to create my lists. Um, so the first one might be incoming jobs. Next one might be next things I want to work on next and the doing things I'm doing now and done just so I can uh, keep track of what's done and see that visually. <clears throat> um, some jobs that uh, we have for our events might be sending out invitations. Um, and so what I've done there is I've created our first card. Um, and that is a one piece of information, or and in this case, it's one task that we need to do. So I'm going to create a few more. Um, it's an online event, so create invite link. Um, we're also going to determine event structure, check technology, um, maybe inform stakeholders. Um, figure out funding. Uh, 
Um, what else do we need to do? Um, we might also organize um, organize food for events. And I know I said this is an online event, but um, I'm not used to organizing these. So I just list out my, my normal um, tasks that I do and I can deal with that later. So these are the incoming jobs that my that I've come up with or maybe my boss has given me and I'm just noting them down there to start with. Um, one, my first task that's really important is sending out invitations. Um, oh, hang on. One important task is to set date of the event. Um, and so now I want to move into what tasks am I going to do? Um, how am I going to work on these tasks? <laughs> and the first task I've invented, uh, invented, identified that I need to do, uh, set date and sending out invitations to the people who are attending the event. Um, I've moved these to next because that's what I want to do um, maybe this week or in the next um, time period. Um, so those two are the key cards for me. I come into work today. I really need to set this date. Um, I'm going to put some information here. Um, sometime in April is best. Um, I want to label this one just to give myself an extra reminder that this is a really important task. So I'm going to make that a red label and put text on that and make it really clear that this is an important task for me. So I add that label and then I can see it. I want to add a due date to this because it's important that this gets done. And I'm going to set that for, what's the date today? I'm going to set that for Friday because that's, yeah, super important. I also want to get a reminder sent out to me a day before the due date is due, just so I really get this done. Now I can see that due date on my card here. Um, and yeah, that reminds me when I need to get it done. Cool, sending out invitations. Um, that is quite a broad, um, a broad task, I guess. So in this one, I'm going to create a checklist. Uh, I'm going to call it subtasks to do. Um, I might need to create invite list, make sure I have a sending email address. Um, create invite template. Um, and we could add a whole bunch of different um, different tasks there. So now I have my checklist created there of things to do. I'm going to add a due date here because this isn't as um, as as it, it isn't as critical as setting the date, so that can be due in a week. Um, one thing I've noticed is I'm the only member of this board. Um, so I talked about wanting to collaborate with people, um, and because I'm working with a team. I really want to start getting them involved in this um, project because I'm going to need help. I can go up to the top of my board and click on invite and I can start inviting some of my colleagues to help out. Here's my friend Taco who's helping me out. Um, and here's my other friend Chorizo. Um, and they're now members of my board. Um, and once I do that, as soon as I click that invite button, that sends an email to those two people um, to let them know that they've been invited to the board. They can then um, log into their account and um, start seeing this content and start editing it. Um, and so the set date one, I I'm just a, you know, a normal worker in this organization so I can't make decisions about setting date um, and I need my boss Taco the dog to um, to basically give approval on this um, I'm going to assign this to Taco the dog 
Um, and now I can see that Taco has assigned this card, which is great. Um, I see a question there from Shilpa. Um, the question is, I see 0% above the subtask. So will we be able to track the amount of work that we have been able to do right? Correct. That's true. So I'll go back to my sending out invitations. I've now created an invite list, and then I can see I've done 33% of the tasks. If I look at the front of the card, I can also see that one out of three um, have been achieved there as well. Um, and when I check them all off, I get a nice jumping icon to celebrate that I've done it, and I see 100% there. I also see this on the front of the card with a green icon, um, which reminds me that I've, um, I've, yeah, completed the checklist, which is awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, what else should we do on this board? Um, I really need Taco to look at this one because I've changed the due date and it needs to be decided today by 12 o'clock, which in my time is only eight minutes or four minutes away. Um, so I really need Taco to look at this. Um, what I'll do is I'll write a, I'll mention Taco in my comment and say, please look, decide on this now. Um, so as you can see, I've mentioned Taco there, um, and that will send a notification out to Taco. Um, if they have email notifications turned on, it'll be an email notification. If not, it'll be a notification within Trello, um, and hopefully that will get uh, Taco to take a look and finally decide on this. Um, I'm not logged into Taco's account, but let's imagine that he says um, uh, date is set for 15th of April. So that's great. Um, this card is now done because I have set the date um, and I'm going to tick that off. And as you can see, it's changed from that uh, scary warning color of yellow. I'll go back and do that again. The scary uh, yellow, which tells me I need to do something. Um, and it's changed to a green, which means, um, great, it's done. And then once I've done that, I don't need to think about that card for a while, so I'm going to move it over to the done um, section here. Um, another useful idea on um, these sort of project management um, uh, lists is to have a or pro project management board. Sorry, is to have a project information um, list. And when I make these, I normally have that in the very first column. Um, and then you can, this can be where people um, basically find out any information about the, um, the project. So I might have something like the event name is called um, Foundation Kick Off. Um, and that's the name of the event. And I want people to really see this, so I'm going to add a cover to this card. Um, I want it to be a, a nice picture, um, and it should be a celebration because it's a kickoff. That's always a good occasion. Um, so now you can see the um, that event name is, is Foundation Kickoff. As we know, um, Taco, my boss, just decided on the date that this is happening. Um, so I think that's important information. So I'm going to put that here in this column just so it's easy and visual for um, people to see when they when they enter the board. Um, I'm going to add another cover to that one just because it, it's useful. Great, and then we can see the date of the event. I might have stakeholders here, because um, one of my tasks was inform stakeholders. Um, and I'm going to add Taco and Chorizo. They're both of my bosses, so basically 
they're the ones that are the stakeholders. Um, I'm also a stakeholder because I'm organizing this, so I'll add myself. Um, and that gives anyone throughout the organization a very easy way just to jump on and see who are stakeholders. Um, I just see another question from Shilpa there. Um, the question is, will we have to add team members separately to each board, or if they already are added into my team in the account, they will have access to all my boards? Very good question. Um, I'll take this in, in two ways. I'll just jump off my board. So I'll go back to my home screen where I was at before. Um, before I started this, I added a few people to the team. So you can see all these um, demo team members here, basically. Um, they can see any boards that are set to visibility of team visible. So you can see here on this board that I created, um, here's the visibility. So if I have it set to team, um, anyone on my team is able to see this board. Um, they might not be able to join it, but they can see it and they can view all the content on it. Um, you can invite them one by one, or it's also possible um, to create a link to invite them with. Um, sometimes I even put that in the first card on the board just so that they can easily invite themselves. Or um, you can, in the settings here, I'll just go through that slowly, sorry. Um, so this is the board menu over here. I can go to the settings um, and I have it here, allow team members to edit and join. So that actually is already set to enabled and that means people can join themselves if they're team members. Does that answer your question, Shilpa, or is there another question around there that you'd like me to go into? Cool. Um, what are some other things that I can do here? Um, another um, thing that I'm working on is I want to have a video playing during the um, during the online event. Um, and so I'm just getting a video. Hold on. So I've got my video content um, is what I need to organize. And I'm going to add a link to YouTube um, to one of my cards. And the cool thing about this is that it, um, we have something called link cards. So this actually shows quite rich information right on the front of the card. Um, it isn't a normal card, so I can't click into it to have um, to see the back of the card or anything, the card details. Um, but basically, I can start to preview this video from within Trello. Um, and um, it once again, it's just there to give me a really visual um, insight into into that link. Um, if I, I made a mistake, I don't I don't want this to be a link card. I want to convert it to a regular card so I can still um, you know add people to it. I can just click on the quick edit menu on the card and switch between those two um, states as well. Um, and there's a lot of different tools that you can uh, set these link cards to. So like Google Drive, um, Dropbox, um, what are some other big ones? Um, Salesforce, um, yeah, basically lots of tools and we're adding a lot more. So that's, that's actually a really new feature and yeah, it's a very cool feature as well. Um, Another thing, and this is my personal tip because I find this really cool, um, is is Butler. And so um, if you haven't used Trello before, Butler is our automation tool. Um, you can find it up here. And so this really helps me because I hate having to move cards around manually. Um, and so basically this should automate some tasks for me. Um, I'm going to create some rules so that, um, yeah, I don't have to, you know, do as much manual work. Um, I'm going to create a rule so that when I um, complete a task or complete a due date, it automatically moves the car into the due, um, uh, into the done column. So I'm going to select this one. When the due date is marked as complete in a card, that's my trigger. And it should move the card to the bottom of the list. 
Where is it? Done. There. Cool. And then we'll see that card in action. I'll just put a due date here. So now I have a due date here. I could move this card manually by dragging it across. But because I have my fancy automation there, I'm just going to um, check that. And as you'll see, it pops over there automatically. Cool. Um, and Butler is really, really powerful. Um, you can see information about it in our help docs. Um, but you can, as I said right at the start, Trello can be easy. You can also set it up to do very com complex um, tasks. And Butler is one um, one area where you can start very simple, but also get very um, very complex as well. Um, that's the main part of the product itself that I wanted to show you. Um, another really useful thing is we have a templates um, template directory. Um, so rather than having to start from scratch, which is sometimes difficult, uh, you can go to our templates um, templates directory here. Um, so you can see the URL up here, and I'll share that on a, on a slide coming up. Um, so we could go to the project management category. Here's a bunch of different um, templates that we can use. Um, some of them are from Trello, others are from people that use Trello and um, you know have um, landed on these things that work for them quite well. Uh, I'm gonna use this one from the Trello marketing team. And this is actually one that they <laughs> do use live. Um, and I'm just gonna use this template. Um, so I'm gonna project management um, for online event. Make sure I put it in my correct team and create. And so you'll see very soon that this creates um, this layout for me. So I don't have to do that from scratch. As you can see here, they have a very similar layout to the one that I had. Um, it's got the project resources, some questions for the meetings coming up, and it's got to do blocked, um, done, and things like that. Um, so templates, if you're not if you hate staring at a blank board and you're not sure what to put in, templates are really, really useful for you. I'll just, if anyone has any questions about how to use the boards, I'm really happy to go into them now, or there'll be time sort of towards the end that we can go into that as well. Feel free to unmute yourselves to ask your question. In case you have low connectivity, you can always drop your questions in the chat box. Ryan is happy to help. Um, yeah, hi, Ryan. It's Jill Bayer. Hi. Yeah, I had a couple of questions. Uh, one is that uh, you spoke about Butler, right? So uh, is there a way that uh, we can make a rule wherein if something is due, if a task is due, and it's not uh, completed, it automatically like shifts the deadline by if I put a rule like if it's not ticked, then just shift it by one week. Or because like most of the times, if there are certain tasks, subtasks that are like about to reach the deadline and there are a lot of notifications popping out, it sometimes is very overwhelming. So is there something that we can do about that? And secondly, um, is there a range of colors that we can explore or get creative with apart from the red, green, yellow? Uh, like, is there a way to customize it to if it is due, if it is done, if it's not done, etc. Um, yeah, thanks for those questions. So I'll go through the um, first one now. Um, so the first question was basically, if a card's due, can we set up a Butler automation um, to either move the due date a little bit, or um, yeah, I guess do anything else with it that we want to? Um, I can go into that. Um, so in Butler here, we have this due date section. Um, so I'll create a command there. Um, I'll add my trigger, and this is the one that uh, you talked about, Shilpa, which is the moment a card is due. Um, so that I want to be my trigger, so something should happen when that happens. Um, so that's um, the action which I want to do is I want to move the due date to the same day next week. So I add that action, and that will just push that due date a week into the future. Um, I still want to get to it, though. Um, so one thing that I want to do is I want to add the red important label so that I actually don't just keep pushing that due date into the future. Um, so that sort of reminds me the due date has been moved once. 
um, and yeah, basically uh, I should do something. Um, so yeah, that's possible. You can add, um, I would say, I wouldn't say any amount of actions to a Butler command, but you can add, um, you know, up to 10 actions. I could also add a member to this, so I could join the card if I want to really um, draw attention to it for myself. Um, yeah, there's lots of different things that you can do um, uh, based on that trigger there. So yeah, does that answer your question, Shilbo? Yeah, it does, thank you. Yep. The second one um, was around, can, I, can you change the colors around due dates and things like that? Um, Unfortunately, no, there's not a way to do that. So there's three colors. Um, red means it's overdue. So this one is overdue because I set it at 12 o'clock um, today and it's now 10 past 12 in my time. Um, there's yellow, which means it's going to be due soon. And then there's red, which uh, green, which means uh, it's complete. And then there's also no color, which means it's not um, imminent or not coming up very soon. But yeah, unfortunately, you can't edit those. Um, they're sort of standard. Any other questions? No, I'll head back to my slides. Just uh, confirming, can people see those again? Yes. Hopefully, yep, great. Um, so yeah, my, my personal tips, so the things that I love in Trello, I talked about Butler already. Um, I use those on all my boards, even uh, my one at home with my partner, and uh, she's always asking uh, if I could add more because uh, it just makes it so much easier if um, if people um, if you don't have to manually move the cards around, it helps to to manage your boards a lot more. Another one is custom fields. Um, so this is a power up that can be added um, that was created by Trello, and basically it allows you to add fields to the back of a card. Um, I can show this in action. I'll just enable it quickly. Um, here, add the power up. Cool. So I've added it to my board now. And then I want to add some custom fields. So the new field will be a text field, and that will be the name. Um, I also want to add. Um, let's say a phone number for the people um, who are attending my online events so I can contact them. Um, and then I can go to, I had sending out invitations. Uh, this doesn't really work, but um, now you can see these custom fields here. And so I could put in the name of the attendee um, and I could put in their um, phone number here as well. Um, and so it's really just good to um, to show extra information. Um, as you can see, now that I've got those custom fields, that actually adds information to the front of the um, card. Um, with the phone number one, I probably should have chosen a text field because it's uh, identifying it as a number. But um, hopefully, you get um, you can see what the benefit of that might be. Uh, the other thing, which is really awesome, and especially if you like using um, keyboards rather than a mouse, there's lots and lots of shortcuts in Trello. Um, some of my favorite ones are, uh, well, question mark, question mark, which brings up all of the um, keyboard shortcuts. Um, the other one that I like to use is the space bar, uh, which quickly adds me to any card that I'm hovering my mouse over. You can see that there where I press my space button. Um, and there's a whole other bunch. If I quickly want to edit a due date, I can hover over a card and press D. That pops up this um, this screen here. If I want to add another member, not myself, I can press M, do that. Um, and if I want to quickly add the label, I can press a number and that adds um, a bunch of labels, depending on the number that I press. Yeah, um, shortcuts save a lot of time, basically. Um, one question is about whether Trello is paid or free. Um, and so a free version, you can have up to 10 boards um, in your workspace or team, um, and you can invite as many people as you want to those boards. There are a few other limitations, um, but you can actually do quite a lot, um, especially if you're using, uh, you know, the basic um, concepts around cards and labels and members um, in the free version. Um, business class costs uh, $120 per team member per year. Um, we do offer 
a 75% discount for registered nonprofit organizations, which um, hopefully most of the attendees would be eligible for. Um, and with that, you get a few, or quite a few extra features. So you get, um, I won't go into them in too many details, but you get unlimited team boards. Um, you can have advanced checklists, which means you can, um, I show checklists within a card and you can assign people and dates to those checklists as well. Um, uh, different ways to view your um, content. So you could view it in a table, um, you could view it in a timeline or a calendar, um, or even a dashboard, which will show you some information about your um, about your cards and board. Um, there's also more Butler command runs um, and more team administration tools, basically. Um, and I've I've left a link there for um, yeah more information about pricing if you um, are interested. We also have a Trello Enterprise. Um, uh, subscription which is our top model which basically gives you the ability to administer across many um, different teams or workspaces and gives you more security features um, yeah um, some resources um, so these are really useful ones um, first place to go is definitely a help center um, it's got pretty extensive documentation and my team and I um, are really happy to add new documents if you think something's missing. Um, we have a bunch of Trello webinars. Um, if you're interested in Butler, we have a really good one for Butler, which talks through some different examples for um, automation. Um, there's some video tutorials on YouTube. Um, I talked about the Trello templates, which is a really, really good way for you to just get started from nothing. Um, if you're looking for help, um, we have a very active community, um, which you can see in the link there. Um, me, my team and I uh, sort of check in there if, if questions aren't being answered and, and help out. Um, but we also have lots of different community leaders who um, contribute there. Um, and if you need any support, um, you can write to us from that page there. Um, my team and I will be very happy to help you. Um, that's also where you'd go if you wanted to apply for um, a nonprofit organization discount, um, you can write to our billing team um, from that link as well. Uh, thanks for listening to me talk about Trello. Um, hopefully um, you've got something out of it and it's a tool that you can use in your organizations. Um, once again, there's definitely time for questions now. If you have any questions at all, happy to answer them. Um, and uh, Renju also dropped a link in the chat. Um, for mentoring as well, looks like. But yeah, thanks a lot for listening. Great, thanks a lot, Ryan. Um, um, so if you guys are interested in um, leveraging the mentorship support that's offered by the team at Atlassian, please um, be, be sure to fill out the um, tool implementation form. The link is available in the chat box. Uh, and if you have any further questions for Ryan, um, uh, please do unmute yourself and you can ask them away. In case uh, you can't, you can always leave them in the chat box. Uh, thank you so much, Ryan. This was a fantastic session. So crisp and I think you covered uh, almost all of the features of Trello. Um, and we'd be, uh, I just wanted to ask you if this deck would be shareable so we can share it with the participants as well. Uh, yep, I'll, I'll share it with um, you, you or Rindu after this um, and you yes. can send it out to the attendees. Yes, that would be great. Thank you so much. So thanks a lot, Ryan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to.